Did you know Bloodstone was an alternative birthstone for March? I snagged this little Bloodstone at the gem show recently because I wanted to let you guys know that it is another stone associated with this month. So I made this pendant. If you want to see how I made this, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. But first, hi, my name is Melissa and welcome to my channel. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'll have some more fun facts about Bloodstone. Okay, so let's get started. So I have a bloodstone here. It's got some reds and some greens in it. It's pretty cool looking. The thing about this stone here is it's flat. It's not a cabochon. It's not domed. It's kind of got two sides to it. See that has a little bit of a gold to it and that doesn't, but potentially it could be a two-sided stone. So I'm going to use some square wire and some half round wire to bind it. I'm going to try to make it a double-sided pendant. I chose 22 gauge square, 22 gauge half round. Those are the smallest I have in square and half round wire and copper. I want to make a swirly design on either side. I don't want it to overtake the stone, so I want my wires to be on the smaller side. To give you an idea of like what kind of swirlies I'm talking about, I'm gonna put some bindings down here. One wire on either side, I'm gonna take the top wires and just kind of make symmetrical swirls. Oh, I'm messing this up. This way, that way, and then that way. So this would be one wire doing that. I'm going to do this on either side here. They'll appear. But basically, kind of like that, I'm going to do a long ways configuration, landscape style, I guess. So we have to figure out how many square wires we need because I want enough to cover the sides, but also one on the top and the bottom that can reach over the top of it and do that design I was talking about. Oop, this is a brand new spool here. Got to take my plastic off. That was quite the task. I'm going to use five wire and just so I have plenty of wire to work with, I'm going to cut them at six inches. Pull them out with my nylon jaw pliers. And cut this end off. Looks a little rough. I actually might need another one because I want to fully cover the side of the stone. Yes, yeah, so four covers the stone and then I'll have the front and back wires for um, swirls. So now I'm just going to make sure they're all nice and straight and nobody's twisting. And for wire management, I grab some painter's tape. Just going to tape the ends momentarily. And I'm going to follow them through to the other side. Make sure everybody is straight. That should be it for the square wire. Grab my half round wire. Grab about six inches of the half round. Now I gotta determine how many millimeters, how long I want my bindings. We'll see how uh, one centimeter, 10 millimeters looks. Actually, I am thinking twice about the size half round wire. I won't. I grab some 20 gauge. I think 20 gauge would be a better choice. And looks like that's about seven inches there. Just a little sturdier. So I'm going to put a hook on that. Make it off to the side or askew. So about half a centimeter off the center here, I'm going to start uh, my bindings. Hook it around your bindings. Bring the front over the top. Flip it. Press it. 
beautiful. I'm going to give them a press to tighten them up a little bit. Flip it and press it. Flip it and press it. Pull it. Flip, press, pull. Flip, press, boop. Pull, flip, press, pull. Flip, press, pull. Flip, press, pull. I got a funny comment in my last video, or my video with my earrings, about how they were going to be singing that in their head. Flip, press, pull. I thought that was pretty funny. I'm going to go one more time around. Cut it on the ugly side. It's my other end right there. Press that down. I like to make sure my bindings are straight up and down. Now come through with some pliers and grab up without scratching. Grab opposite corners and press. Take my tape off. So I'm going to take my front wires, back, well I guess there's no front or back, top wires and bottom wires. They're going to make my swirlies and these side wires are going to be shaped around my stone. Ever so gently. Make sure everybody stays straight. Now I gotta determine the center here and bend them upward. Sharpies help when you're trying to figure that out. I put my flat nose pliers right on the line and bend them upward together. that on both sides. It's nice and snug. Actually, since I cut my 22 gauge, I'm going to bind these wires together with the 22 gauge. But I'll wrap my bale in the 20 gauge. So let me hook this on. There's no front or back really, so I'm just going to start wrapping. All my wires stay straight. Don't 
don't want to go too far up. What I'm going to do for my bail is I'm going to take the front four wires, the outer ones, I'm going to bend outward a little bit and then bend them back. See that? Same with this side. Bring them out a little bit and then bend them back. They're going to be seated alongside the second wires. And then I'm going to wrap all four of them into my bail. These last two wires on the side, let's bring them out. Just to get them out of the way a little bit. Go back to my 20 gauge. I'm not sure how much I'll need. I'll go a little farther up to get started. It's safe to trim it. At this point, I'm going to snug it down. My goal is to wrap about an inch. That should give us a decent size bale. A few more wraps. Take my bale making pliers now. You can use a dowel or anything you've got. I don't need this half round anymore. I'm going to give it a snip. I'm just straightening out my bale here. I'm going to unwrap a little bit. So I want to wrap downward, but I want to cover these bindings here. Let me try to straighten these out. A little too far. So 
Let's see if we can make this look halfway decent. With our kinked up half round wire. It could look better for sure. I'm going to trim it there for now to get it more manageable, and then I'll trim it shorter. Just going through and seeing if I can tighten anything up. Okay, so these side wires here, there's two on each side. I'm going to bring them straight down. But first, I'm going to put a bend in them. Oh, that's too much. Next, I'm going to come through and flush cut them. Flush cut this half round wire. This wire should hide that. And now I can flush cut these wires. There. All right, bales done. Let's get our stone situated. Okay, so we gotta make our swirlies, but we have to make them preferably symmetrical. Okay, so let's pull them out. Pull them out so they're nice and flowy. And I'm gonna swirl on either side. Do the same back here so our stone doesn't fall out. These little swirlies will be acting like our prongs. Squeeze them with pliers if you want them a little smaller. I don't think I'm going to have room for that swirl. I think I'm just going to come up around and make the top swirl.
just need to take the plunge and start swirling. Hmm, where should I cut them? First, I gotta make sure they're all in nice shape. Taking the plunge. This might be too much still, so we'll just see. Grab my pair of round nose pliers. That looks like too much. I don't want swirls to be too overpowering now. So I'm going to try to get some bindings on. Bring it through the middle and then kind of wiggle it down to where I want it here. Get that under there. Get this guy under there. All righty. Come on. Let's go. Here we go. There it is. Thank goodness. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. Okay, try to get that side through. Pre bend in it. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Okay, so there is no front or back to this guy. What'd you guys think of that tutorial? 
pretty proud of myself on how much I measured and I got, you know, things pretty precise for the most part. That's kind of something I'm bad at, exact preciseness, which I should be because I'm OCD about that. But anyway, so on to bloodstone facts. So why is it named bloodstone? As you can see by my stone here, it's got some red with green background. It was often thought that the red resembled drops of blood. Bloodstone does date back thousands of years. It was used in amulets for protection and to ward off evil spirits. So that's pretty cool. Bloodstone is often associated with courage, strength, and vitality. The red in the bloodstone is caused by iron oxide or hematite. Believe it or not, hematite I thought was like a dark metal color. Color. Of course, all bloodstones vary in their intensity of colors and such. And bloodstone belongs in the Chalcedony family. So those are a few fun facts about bloodstone. Thank you very much for hanging with me for so long. I appreciate it. And as always, if you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. If you have any more fun facts about Bloodstone, leave that down in the comments as well. I'd love to hear about it. I'm trying to learn more about stones, so that's why I'm going to have some fun facts about the stones I'm using. So I hope you enjoy that. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Today I'm wearing my little butterfly that I made out of Montana agate. So I'll throw that video up here if you want to see that. Bye.